Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video with Swaggle House. Well, we're still here at Ontario Comic Con, going around doing a little bit of hunting. But for this video, I thought we'd do something a little bit different. You know, 2021 has been a crazy year for comic books, prices, and things like that. So I thought it'd be kind of cool to interview some comic book dealers here at the show to just get a sense of how they feel about the market, how they feel about the year, and uh, just their general take on, you know, the comic book uh, collecting industry. So I hope you guys enjoy some of these interviews and uh, let's see what they have to say. Brad, thank you so much, man. You're welcome. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I, I bought a couple of comics from you yesterday uh, yeah. and, you know, you, you definitely gave me a good deal. Uh, it feels like this has been a pretty cool show so far. Like, I mean, what's your general vibe of uh, the show so far? Yeah, the Ontario area is actually kind of a new area for comic cons and so we've came here this is maybe only four years now mm -hmm. and it's a wide open room it's nice friendly uh, the hotels are great the vibe is cool it's like a big little show right so right. everybody's here I mean not a lot of competition for me because I have vintage comics right but there's toys art you know actors performers cosplay Lego everybody's having fun right so uh, I, I don't know how long have you been a dealer well, I've been a collector since I was five years old, so 60 years. And um, as far as being a professional dealer, I started just 10 years ago okay. because I'm still an avid collector. Right. I've got a big collection that I can always... Well, yeah, you can see his beautiful books all behind us right here. Thank you. Uh, so 2021, obviously kind of a huge year, right, for comics big prices things like that yeah, obviously it was nuts the it movies went, like things tripled overnight it seems like yeah is that has this do you feel like this was the biggest spike in what you've seen doing it for 10 years i compare it to the spike of the late uh mid to late 90s uh one year uh, the overstreet price guide which was the go-to um, book it was like the bible of pricing comics they they reported it as being an average price of sales but in the late 90s, Robert Overstreet decided to triple prices on high end. And it kind of didn't do well for the buying public. They just didn't believe it. Right. Why should it be like that? Normally it was about 10% a year. But then the pandemic started. And it, it's really, it's tough to say exactly why comics did what rental cars and used cars and and some things that just like were out of hand right and um i believe really honestly people just did not go places they did not spend the money that they would have spent automatically and with the bonuses and and people got and maybe even some out of work people that were collectors they said man now i can get my books right but to see a book, say, Giant Size X-Men 1, go from being 3,000 in 8.0 to 10,000 within three months was absolutely unheard of. Right. And I don't believe that's a rare comic because it went back down. Right. And that's the thing, is you have to be careful. But there is a pandemic bubble for comic books. Right. So, so speaking of up and down, like, I mean, you got tons of comic books here. You always got to price it when you go to shows. Like, how how do you kind of manage following the trend of a price and remarking your books and things like that? By having nothing else to do. <laughs> right. I mean, I literally had to go online and reprice all of my best comics. Right. This is the good stuff. If you just pan over here, all this stuff, I started repricing really almost every week. Right. Right. And just checking, oh, I'm getting ready to go back to a show. Am I going to be right? right? Now, I would put them to what the market price was, but I'd still give a deal. Because right. that's who I am. I, I feel like, for me, you have to buy them right and sell them right. So, you know, grade them correctly and give some equity. That's what collectors want. They, Oh, really? And I, I tell people, you know, I'm going to give you a deal. Yeah. You're not going to pay full price. And I, I would imagine, too, that, like, you know, it's it's really more for you. You just want to create the sales and not sweat. Oh, I lost out on this one specific book. It's really more about coming out ahead on everything, I would assume. I mean, look, 
we're all going to sweat sometimes. Sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I wish I had the two giant size. I had a 9.4 Werewolf by Night. I made like $1,000. I sold it for five grand. It went up to 17000 a month later. Yikes. I mean, come on. Yeah. Yeah, that, I, that's a rough pill to swallow. But I got what I wanted. Right. And if I don't sell my comics, how am I going to get comics? Right. So, uh, last couple of questions before I sure. let you, before I let you go here. So, you know, this is something maybe you have an opinion you don't, but I'm really curious about the graded comic books as far as like CGC and CBCS is concerned. Yeah. Okay. Like, if if I'm a customer, like right here, you have a Tales to Astonish 27 in a CBCS. So, if I'm a customer and I say, hey, I really want that first Ant Man, have you ever had it where someone you show them the book and they say to you, uh, you know, I don't really want to get a CBCS. Is there, do you feel that as a dealer? Yep. I mean, uh, I don't, listen, I love the company CBCS because their approach was make a good product. They make a great case. Steve Barack is the owner. He was a premium grader at CGC and a buyer for Heritage. He knows his comics. So really, I, his grading is pretty spot on. But he, they don't have the reputation because there was a couple of smaller companies like PGX that really kind of blew it for graders because they just overgraded. Everybody felt that they were always one point over the grade. Like, yeah. oh yeah, that's a four. No, it's a three. Yeah. Uh, honestly, I get comics already graded at a wholesale price. That's the way I do it. Personally, I sell 95% ungraded comics. Why? Because people trust my grades and the gamble is theirs. Right. right. They can go out and get that bump when they do the grading. Yeah. Do I want to wait the time? Do I need to pay the extra money? I sell it for what I want to sell it for and then they earn that bump right. and they come running back. Oh, that book that was a nine. It was a nine four. Right. And they just love, oh, I'm buying comics from you now. Yeah, I definitely noticed that. I mean, I feel like you're you're very very fair in how you grade, uh, almost be. almost be almost conservative in in how you do it. Because I was the guy standing out there for a long time. Right, right. I want to give me the deal. Right, right. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, okay, last and then last couple questions. Do you do you notice as a dealer? Obviously, like Spider Man comes out. Do you feel like everyone here is like, hey, do you have that insert Spider Man book? Is is that is it just kind of. A to B like that with these movies and things? It's, it's, it's been happening since about 2005. It took a couple years to get going. The Spider-Man 1, uh, X-Men 1 movies. And then the little hype because they realized they were doing little trailers at the end. And then the hype started. Now, now, every year in San Diego, we haven't had San Diego for the last couple years. But every year in San Diego, they announce the, the Marvel Universe. Right. So there's all that streaming shows, all the Moon Knight, all the Vision, all that was announced. And it went bazonkers. I mean, I literally bought a book one day on Friday, sold it on Saturday for three times what I paid for it. That's Just crazy. because first Moon Knight. Right. Or first Blade. Because they're going to make those movies again. Uh, you know, I have to, if I'm in the business and five people ask me for a book, and I don't know why. It was a dollar book. What do you mean? It's not in the dollar box anymore and they're all gone? Wait, I had five of those. Wait, you want one? You want one? If I don't get five, I'm not doing my job. Yeah. That's what I'm I always feel. I always feel a little funny if I see something and let's say you have like five copies and I walk up to you and I'm like, yeah, I'm going to buy this book five times from you. I always feel like there's got to be a, an unspoken like, hey, I, I got to figure out what's going on with this thing. Yeah, right? like why is that in there? Yeah. W wait a minute. What's going on? And, and literally, there are people that know a lot more than you and I know. Oh, yeah. They get inside traded knowledge. They got, they're got they working for the company. Oh, for sure. Uh, listen, I got a secret. Some of them tell me, you know, I know something, but I'm not telling you. Right. And then I see what they're buying. Oh, oh you. Wait, wait, but you're going to tell me after I record. Right? Of course, you're going to yeah, tell me well, after I record. Get your wallet out. Yeah. All right. Well, thank, thank you so much, Brad. I really, really Welcome. appreciate it. And, uh, you know, hope you have a great rest of the show. Look me up, FEF Comics Online or Facebook. And uh, we're always at the local shows. Thanks a lot. All right. Thank you. All right. So I'm here with the professor and Lady T from Lady T Comics right here, as you guys can see. And 
you know, we're out here in Ontario, and you know, how's the how's the show been so far for you guys? This has been a pretty good show for us, and um, we're really excited to be here. It's our first time doing this show. Yeah, yeah, it's it's certainly. You know, we're at the very back corner, and yesterday we're thinking, I don't know if it's going to go so well, but we sold a lot of stuff yesterday, and today's been really good so far. Um, you know, in terms of the stuff that's kind of selling, we were sort of amazed. We sold a lot of slabs. Like, we've heard, you know, rumors about, like, people want more, like, raw books and less slab books, and that's, I don't know. Like, in our experience, at least at this show, we've sold a lot of slab books, and I don't know if it's just people are just wanting that thing encased, and they just feel like this is always going to be an 8.0, and I don't have to worry about what I'm buying. But uh, we've done really well on the slabs, uh, certainly at this con. Um, so really hard to complain because you're making a lot of money when you're selling slabs. Nice, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's awesome. But that's funny because that was the question I was going to ask about yeah. slabs. I mean, mostly I feel you guys have CGC behind you. Yeah. But like, do you ever get like, when you when you sell between like CBCS or CGC and things like that, do you notice like people having a prejudice in any kind of way? Or if I if I say, hey, do you have that Black Knight book and you had it in CBCS, I'd be like, actually, I don't really want that one. What, what do you think about that? Well, we pretty much exclusively only sell CGC. Okay. So I can't say we're, we're I mean, so I guess we're kind of biased already. Already we're um, biased. We've never had, that I can remember someone saying, if you only had this in you know CBCS, we would buy it and it's in CGC, we're right. not gonna buy it. So, I mean, I, you know, we've, we've talked a little bit, but I, we both work for cover prices. We're putting in a lot of books and doing a lot of graded stuff and kind of, we've always, I'm not sure we've ever seen like a major key book sell for more money as a CBCS slab than a CGC slab, which right. isn't to say it hasn't happened and it won't happen and it doesn't happen, but kind of but what we see is is CGC gets you more bang for your buck in the graded. That may be changing, and I'm sure there's people watching right now yeah, going yeah, like, oh, I'm yeah, full yeah, of it. Yeah. I don't know what I'm talking about. But certainly in our experience, that's what we have seen and what we have experienced. Yeah. Oh, so we're not anti-CBCS. We're just always sort of, I think when we started getting books graded, we did CGC. Where I am interested in buying CBCS, I think with like, golden age like low grade golden age books i don't really think it matters if you have right. cbcs or or cgc like rare you know unicorn books like if you can get that book uh, i am all for it i've tried to buy a bunch of cbcs stuff um graded golden age like pre-code horror stuff and i just haven't had any luck doing it so it's not that i won't do it it's just that i'm trying to do it <laughs> and i can't I do it with those kind of books i mean the big thing we we're just trying to avoid Stuff with restoration so it's like if it's it's been graded and you feel confident doesn't have restoration that's kind of i mean for me that's yeah. that's kind of what's important with those kind types of books so for me yeah cgc or cbcs right. for those kind of books wouldn't yeah that, ma that makes sense that makes sense yeah. so so we're at the show obviously it's like you know uh, it's always fun to kind of be at these types of things yeah. and meet, meet people and things like that um but you guys also sell a lot on facebook online and things like that we do. right so you do a lot of live sales which by the way go to lady t comics yeah, facebook lady t page comic keys. Uh, <laughs> but but uh so what, what's the difference for you experience wise like as far as like selling online or selling a show like this i, I imagine obviously it's easier to do it at home uh yeah. from you know the comforts of online right. but maybe you get more foot traffic here what's your experience as, well, as a dealer i'll say we do a lot of um we do a lot of like discounts on i'd say cheap books here because we're not shipping them so if I'm gonna blow out a lot of books, like we have all these 70% off over here, for us that you know we're not paying any shipping, it's worth it to just sell them very cheap and, and that kind of thing. And we yeah. sell a lot, same like he was saying, more slabs in person than yeah, on our, our live stream. Sure. We sell primarily raw books. I mean, we do grade all our sort of higher dollar raw books, and our loyal yeah. customers, I guess, trust our grading, so yeah, yeah. Uh, they're comfortable buying raw books from us. But um, so we do sell a lot more yeah. slabs. I mean, it's fun to meet people at cons, for sure. We yeah. have people that watch our live stream shows that then come to our, come meet us at cons and be like, hey, I'm this person yeah, on yeah. your live right. stream. Yeah. And they want to, you know. So that's always fun meeting and talking to people. Very fun. But it certainly is convenient, especially now, especially through COVID. I think that really ramped up the online sales. I mean, like, it's, it's, it's just less stressful doing it at home. And yeah. you can control the environment at home. And you can control what you want to sell and how you want to sell it, and, you know. So it makes it 
just more manageable in some ways. Like, you know, we're here in Ontario, California. We're based in Tucson. So we're driving, getting hotels. You're paying a lot of money to come and do these things. We do them because they're just a lot of fun. And we certainly do well at them financially. But it's, it's pretty hard to beat, like, at... 6 30 going well we're going live in 30 minutes yeah. and yeah. not really having to think about it and two hours later you've sold x amount of dollars of books and it's just like that was pretty easy and not didn't have to drive to california to do it right. so right. um and we sell slabs like we talked about selling slabs earlier we don't really sell many slabs at all in our live stream shows and we sell a lot of slabs here at torpedo con we sold a ton of slabs so i think that helps too like you really have to come to cons for people in my opinion in our opinion to drop real money on slab books this is where that tends to happen more for us anyways right. no the um the live streams have become a very social thing right. um so i mean i yeah. know it, you know cons are very social and you see a lot of the same people at different cons but but the live streams have become very social uh, a lot of the people tune into our show every week you know some of the same people they get to know each other right. and they watch each other's shows and and um, you know about their families and you learn about I mean yeah. it's really it's a it's a the commu- I really love how we built a community with yeah. our own show right um, right yeah. so it, that part I think has been surprising to me but obviously we had Spider-Man just come out right. do you notice that when you show up at a con like this today everyone's like hey do you have this 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 of this course. is it the Hawkeye books are gone so don't bother yeah. looking for right. them yeah. they're pretty much gone Hawkeye out of the Hawkeye blew up anything you know? related to any yeah. movie that's about to come out that has just come out or that will be coming out is usually what people are really going for but it comes in waves like at Torpedo Con because Black Knight was this sort of like blowing up as a spec thing because Eternals right. hadn't come out yet everyone we sold all the Black Knight stuff but we still have a lot of that here and you don't know if it's because Eternals was whatever you know and now there's just like all this other stuff has happened and so now's the time I think in any when you're trying to buy key books related especially to movies is that let the sort of peak of that thing go past and then and then yeah, snag you can it. so find right it. now you is when you should it, be yeah. buying Black Knight books not Six totally. months ago, right? Like the last little thing, I guess I'll kind of ask you guys. Like, so going into next year, 2022, do you, do you, like, are there just any trends that you feel like you've seen in particular? Things that you guys have learned sure. over the last year in selling, uh, tips for people who are buying from you guys, things right. like that. The, well, of course, the video game books. Have, I'm yeah. a bit shocked because I'm kind of a kid of the the late 80s, 90s to see those books like people that just want them want them and 90s books period that you know it's right a lot of the nostalgia books well yeah people, because the people that wanted the silver can't really afford some of that stuff now and then and then you know then all of a sudden it becomes bronze is still like you know and then but like all this copper and modern stuff like you know especially indie stuff you know the valiant comics and the image comics from that era there are like people can like buy those really cheap and there's like people are specking hard on that stuff you right know, first appearances and all that mm-hmm. kind of thing and grabbing so, some of the modern things in 9.8 just a cover 9.8 i think like people right. have seen that they they got that and seen how much those things have escalated just quickly uh, for sometimes no reason at all um, and and so I think that's gotten people yeah. that that's the one thing that gets people excited about grading books is that oh I you know that book that I bought for four dollars and then I got it graded and now it's you know whatever it's invincible one or it's right. whatever yeah. you know right. so yeah, so I think that's kind of, that. of does get people excited about about the comic book hobby all right, so I'm with Christian with L. Beans Comics. Yo, what's up, my people? Yeah, so we're here in Ontario, and let me just start by asking, you know, how's the show going? Show's great, man. Show's great. Thanks for asking, Swaggle. The show is great. Uh, get to see a lot of the comic people. You know, this is our second show back. It was a long, what, 20 months gone, so got to reconnect with a lot of friends, make some new friends. And, man, the comic industry, like we know, it's it's booming man it's booming so it's been really good but really it's the people that's what's good well that's speaking of because i had to ask you i mean i don't know how long you've been a dealer great question Uh, i've been selling comics for 17 years okay now i'm a high school teacher i think most people know that i'm a high school teacher but i've been selling for 17 years and this is probably our like 100 110 ish show we do usually like 13 14 year i think it's like nine years 10 years so we're 
We a veteran in this game, you know what okay. I'm saying? We a veteran. So then, so then, 17 years, and then we have 2021. Woo. Pretty crazy comic book year. Like, what, has it this been like kind of like the biggest jump you've seen in your um, 17 years? Like, what, what's your biggest jump? It, as far as like me. the prices going up, things great like question. that. Like, uh, what's your sense overall? Okay, great question on prices. I'm gonna say no. Okay. Although it, it, there's been a big jump in price. Really, I think when you look at what has happened, you look at the context. I've seen bigger jumps in prices um, in, for certain books. I would say it's the biggest. Here's what I'll say. I was just talking to a guy who's a friend of mine. He's been a comic book guy for 30 years. And I said, this is the best time to be a comic book guy mm. because the acceptance, the media, I mean, Black Widow and all the movies, I mean, you got to watch it. It's incredible. Yeah. Um, all that stuff. So for prices, I truly think that the prices should be higher. Right. You know what I mean? Well, it's an exciting time. It's right an exciting now, yeah. time because when I was in school, I'm 50. When I was in school, it kind of wasn't cool to be a comic book guy. I, right. I wasn't. Actually, right. truth to be true That's to, true. I didn't That's get true. into comics until I was in college. But right now in my classroom, every day, every day, someone's got a comic book shirt on a harley quinn belt buckle right. a batman backpack so it's it's changed right to where it's part of the culture like i'm a history teacher and i'm also long-winded but like there's times when culture was mark twain then there's times when culture was harlem then there's times when it was early hollywood right. culture right now it's the mcu it's comic books. Yeah, that's the for culture sure. For sure. so what's going to happen when the young people growing up in the culture have the money to get that culture yeah the biggest jump is yet to come mm. we are at the, the 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 just rising up when you're on the beach and you're on your board and that waves come and you just start to go up that's hey what's up we can be heroes my man what's up brother what's up what's up what's up what's up hey it's the man right here go see his shop we can be heroes go see that shop yeah yeah all right it's good to see you we just we just starting to go up yeah. So again, that's because I've been doing this for so long. Like everyone's like, oh my gosh, this book used to sell for 30, now it sells for 50. That's great. But imagine when all these people consuming the Marvel culture. If 1% of 1%, think about the math. If 1% of 1% want to get to the source material, there's not enough of it. No, I think I, there's not enough of I it. I think you're right. I mean, like I'm a, I'm someone who grew up in the '90s era. You know, okay. like my age range. Sure. And it's like now I'm. I'm, a, I'm so when did you graduate high school? So I'm I'm 2001. So I'm 38. I'm 38 years old. Okay, so we're 10 years. Well, I'm 50. But I grew up. I grew up at that time, and like you know, now now I'm of you, age. You were like 11. I'm, you were like 10, 11 when yeah. the, when image happened. Right. 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 So now you're of an age where like, oh my gosh, I can go and yeah. get. And I and I have all the nostalgia for those books, but it's very right. insightful what you said because there are going to be that generation who grew up with the Avengers movies and they're gonna go nuts you know they're, they're like I, I gotta get I love Black Widow I love Natasha I gotta get, get her first appearance right and there's just not enough of them right right there's just not enough That's so that really is going to be the big jump right right now could it all come crashing down I mean of course man yeah. we would have the Walking Dead come and this all don't matter but we just friends my opinion we just on the incline right. we just on the incline that's what I think again. But again, uh, that's my opinion. Whatever. And so, and so to, to that point with like the movies. In, oh, you, yeah, yeah. you can walk on back, my friend. Come on back. Can I use Swaggle House? Yes, yes, yes. Hey, just don't let me interrupt you. Man. Oh, hey, what's going on? Man? I like your videos. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Swaggle, he's famous. So, so, so to the point of the movies affecting, you know, yeah. people's interests and things like that. Sure. Like as a dealer, do you, is, it, is it like clockwork? Like Spider-Man comes out. And then everyone comes up to you today in the booth and says, hey, do you got that thing? Is okay, that, yeah, for sure. Like now, I would say yes, but use a different example because Spider-Man Spider and Batman rule the roost. Okay, always popular. Always. Yeah. That, those are number one and two, ain't no doubt. But, but so, for example. Say like a Shang-Chi. Sure, out. of course. So th there's a natural thing where you say, oh, when you see the first, the first information they're making this movie, spike. When you see the first casting, spike. When you see the first trailer, spike. When you see the second trailer, which is the best trailer always, that's the little thing you got to know. First trailer, wet you. Second trailer, that's going to feed you. When that comes out, there's another spike. Right. What has happened previously is when it was done, there would be a precipitous drop. Now what we're seeing is either a plateauing, a slight drop, or even an increase. Right. You look at like Wanda. 
I'm going to drop a little something on you. This is from Christian Melvin's comics. This is, you, you can mark this down, put it to the bank. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to look back in 10 years at Wanda as the Iron Man for Disney+. Plus. Mm. That's the Iron Man for Disney+. Plus. Those books might have dipped a little bit, but the book was here. It went to here. Now it's here. So you might say, oh, look, the price went down. No. The price dipped a little bit from where it was it's kept its value right so you look at kang books right kept its value right has the shang chi right. book dipped a little bit of course has it come back down to where it was no no no, no, just a, no, new, no. a new floor has been established and that's the thing that's why we call this man swaggle just kind of going into the next year you know mm -hmm. 20, 2022 what's your general sense of where we're going Ooh. 2021 was a big year okay what do you feel in uh, let, same, let, me, same let, me try, let me try to keep the politics out of it and let me try to keep the, the mask and the, the pandemic out of it. Okay. Um, I, I see an acceleration. Uh, I think what really can really set it off, uh, does the Sandman show on Netflix, does it kill? If the Sandman show kills, which it's going to because that's the best story in comic books, the Sandman, if that kills, that puts independent properties on the MCU level. Right. If the Black Adam movie what we see from it there's a lot of confidence that's going to do it if the green lantern show on hbo is a level up if they level up to marvel even 75 or hey, you can walk on in bro so let's be the one that pulls the books down if the non-marvel properties even get to be a c plus right b minus wow right wow right, right? so um I, I think the appetite to consume these great stories and characters are only going to accelerate. Like you got a fire and you get that gasoline dumping on there. That's what I see. Right now, the prices and all that stuff. Those are different for each book. People always say, Christian, tell me what to buy. There's my first con. Uh, the con books are hot. What do I buy? I answer the same exact way every single time. Buy what you like. Yeah. What do you like? I had someone earlier come and there's a dad and a kid and said, hey man, we, we, we like we like the, the, the Marvel shows. It's our first Comic Con. I want to get my kid into some books. What should I get? And I say, what do you like? Buy what you like, man. You right, know what I mean? Right. If I say buy this hot book, no, this, that's, that's no. Yeah. Buy what you like. You know what I'm saying? So I, I think, and also people like this man right here and all the countless other great people that put out content, all the Instagrammers and the whatnotters and all that stuff man it's it's content you know and people watch your video and they feel like that relationship with you right. like, like you're their friend right. and you are but you don't even know them right. but because a lot of people that do comics they don't have anyone in their life to sort of like say oh my gosh just, you can talk to someone about the Raiders and the Lakers if you're like man that Shang-Chi movie was so great yeah but you want to get into it yeah that's why people like you and it's so it's so important so that's where I really see the growth yeah. I see the growth in people like yourself. The community. The community who's saying, like, there's a need. I'm going to meet it. I'm rising up to meet it. And, you know, that's why a lot of people came, you know, today and yesterday. They just want to talk, man. They just yeah. want to talk. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, and yeah, we, yeah, we yeah. talked to them about this. What do you think about this? And that's what I love. Last question. This, is, the one, this is what I wanted to ask you. I'm ready. Sure. Uh, from a dealer's perspective. Because sure. you, you, you do a lot of, like, online Instagram claim I sales. I do. We, like we've that. done over 180 claim sales during the pandemic. Right. So We hustlers. So what's the difference? I feel like there's probably pros and cons. Like, what's your sense as, like, a, a seller? Okay. Uh, during the pandemic, when we did all those live claim sales, uh, over 180. You can do the math. It's, like, one every two and a half days. Um, uh, it's the hardest I've worked, period. During the pandemic, I was putting in 12 to 16-hour days every day. Every day. But it's fun. When you, when you love it, it's fun. So... What I try to do, and, and I hope people that watch that maybe have seen me, is it's about relationship. I, I try to somehow replicate the live environment with the Instagram world. That's why my wife, best friend wife, that's why my kids, child and daughter, uh, are a part of the show. Because for me, like, you'll see me like, like I, don't, I, don't, I don't post this book on my Instagram and say like, all right, 10 bucks, buy it. I don't do that because that's not the goal. Right. I'm not, the goal isn't that. The goal is relationships. The goal is communication. The goal is figuring out what can I do? What can Elvin's Comics do to enhance and improve the reading and collecting lifestyle of my people, right. right? So the difference when you have on Instagram is he's just watching. I don't get to interact. So Elvin's Comics is a live comic selling business. We adapted. We're going to keep the IG live sales going. We're going to keep the whatnot throwdown Thursdays going. We're going to do all that. But this is our home. 
yeah. right? In, in, in the 10 by 20 booth with the people. Right. But you want to try to create that because again, and friends, I hope you think this is cool I say that. You guys out there, do what he's doing, right? Do it yourself, man. You got something to share. You got something to say. Get on the mic. Don't worry about it. Make it happen because people want to consume it. We want to consume it. We sit around the house, man. We want to be with our friends. We want to hear people talk about what we like. So one of the differences that we try to do is to try to create that. Now it's difficult because they're not here. Even more than that, I want to say again, y'all do it, man. There's a need for it and a want for it. Yeah. You know, you got something to say and, and share. Flip the phone around, my friends. Get yourself out there, man, because people want to hear what you got to say. You yeah. know what I mean? Be like this man right here. Be an example like this man right here. Well, right. Be, 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 be better than me, but I want to say, Chris, thank you so much, man. You're welcome. Good luck with the rest of the show. And, Every uh, day. Definitely Every go, day. Ch check, go check out his uh, live sales as well. That's it, elvinscomics.com. No, not .com. Elvinscomics on IG, baby. Come get me. All right.